Welcome to the underground, you rebel scum. This is the American Expat. I'm glad you're here. Hopefully, uh, hopefully your day is going well. Last night, we were privileged to hear from Joe Biden, the president of the United States, about the current state of the union, or at least uh, his version of it. I, I did stay up to watch it. I did stay up. Well, I watched some of it. I had to get up early today because I went and gave a, a little presentation at my son's school about China. And um, that, that was a lot of fun. A lot of kids asking me stuff about China. <laughs> Be careful not to, like, drift into, well, you know, uh, it, it was all great until the uh, the interrogation thing and the cameras everywhere and the rules. China's an amazing place, I have to say. I, I, I really miss it all the time. But that's that's completely off topic. Anyway, I watched some of it. And, you know, I pretty much got the gist of what Joe Biden was going to say. Um I, I think I watched up and I, I saw the part where the guy was shouting and got pulled out. Turns out that was a gold star father and he's been arrested because y imagine that you're upset because your son gets killed in action and you get arrested because you're upset. I mean, they could have just taken him out. Sure. Okay. He's making a ruckus during the speech. Take him outside. Let him cool off. But to arrest him, I guess that's the way that the Biden administration works. Anyway, I wanted to talk today about the real state of the union because I think that we're in a serious crisis situation. You've probably seen the uh, the stuff going around the internet from Elon Musk about how we're headed toward something worse than 9-11 taking place. It's related to the southern border being wide open for so many years. And uh, some of my thoughts about that, I also, I don't, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but I, I put a poll up on the channel asking if people wanted to see more of like talking about current events or the, the whatever kind of videos that I've been putting out lately. Um, and it seems that most people want to hear about current events, which is fine by me. I can, if I want to make those other videos, I guess I can put them somewhere else. But uh, somebody left a comment and I've been thinking about it all morning and now into afternoon about some of the things I said in there. Don't worry, I'm not upset about the comment you left. But, uh, <clears throat> it said essentially, I like the old you better. And I started thinking about that. What is the old me? How did we get to this uh, this point? Uh, what does that even mean? Is it like the old me when I was in China doing whatever? The old me talking about how crazy everything is here in the United States now that we're back? And I thought I would get into that, you know? Just uh, how we got to this place, what the real state of the union is, and all of that. Also mentioned in the comment was that they liked my original old intro, so this is for you. Whoa! Hopefully you enjoyed that. Now I've got the microphone all goofed up. There we go. Yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that uh, throwback. I ought to throw that. I'll just keep it in there. You know, there's all this advice on YouTube about like, cut the intro, do this, do that to try and get people to. And I'm I'm so sick of trying to, you know, follow what they say you're supposed to do on YouTube. That I'll say whatever. If you want to listen to what I have to say, then you're going to have to listen to that uh, that little intro because some people like it. Some people don't. Just uh, just stick around and hear us out because, um, well, you know, that's how it is. That's that's the music from when I was in China doing all kinds of fun stuff. Now we're into the not fun stuff, which we can start there. How did we get to this place? <clears throat> how did we get in this situation? You know, when I was in China, I loved living in China. I, my, my whole life there, uh, my son was born there. We have family over there. All of my experiences, things were going really well up until covid and when COVID happened, it, I don't know if you're, you know, there's videos of it. We got locked up in our apartment, not literally locked. They sealed the door by putting something over it to make sure that we didn't come out. So they would know if we came out and we had to stay in there for two weeks and then another two weeks. That's right. An entire month sealed up in, a, in our apartment on the 27th floor. And that was a bad experience. That was not, uh, that was not cool. If you want to put it that way. And I was already thinking like, I uh, <laughs> I want to go. Maybe we should think about going back to the United States at this point. I mean, I understood things were crazy all over the world because of the pandemic. 
But, uh, you know, I, at least I wouldn't have been locked in my house for, you know, any period of time in the United States. I, I know crazy stuff happened here, too, but that had me thinking. And then uh, there was the whole thing where I got taken and interrogated because of the Twitter post that I made. And at that point, I was convinced, OK, it's uh, you know, this is this is wild. I need to go back to the United States where. I don't have to worry about what I say online. And I was quite shocked that I would say something on Western social media and it would have that impact on me in China. But it did. And I don't know, a lot of things came together at that time. It was like a miracle. That's the only way I can describe it. It really all came together. We'd been uh, dealing with the consulate for a long time, They trying to get my son's consular record of birth abroad, his passport and all of that. They'd been dragging their feet for a long time to the extent that I wasn't sure that it would ever materialize, that it would ever happen. And then all of a sudden after that, they called us and said, come and get it. You know, we will get your son um, an emergency passport printed right away and whatever you need to be able to get him into the United States. And no wait, none of that. Just come and get it. And, you know, that was that was exactly what we needed at that time in order for us to be able to go to the United States. So it that worked out. Um, I had no confidence that we would be able to get our resources together and get it out of China in a meaningful way to where we could use it to, to get started in the United States. But somehow, against all odds, we did. And we had enough to be able to come here at just the right time when real estate prices were at their lowest to get a house just before they took off, you know, and now they've gone through the roof and all of that stuff happened since then. But it was just perfect timing. If it had happened any different than then, than when it did, it wouldn't have worked out. Uh, somehow it did. And we came back to the United States and I was really looking forward to, you know, my son's going to grow up here. He's going to have the same kinds of experiences that I had. Um, the freedom stuff, I'm going to be able to speak my mind on the internet and nobody's going to, you know, like, take me and interrogate me or shut me down. I don't have to guard my tongue. Well, that all, that, that turned out to not be the case. And it's been a frustration ever since. And I've had some run-ins with Google and uh, people who work to subvert your freedom of speech. Sure. They can't take it away outright, but while well, the current administration seems to be trying to do that. And that's a part of the state of the union. I would say that our freedoms are under attack here. Uh, that is the current state of the union. Um, they're using private corporations to subvert the law and the Constitution in order to attack free speech. And I think that it's becoming more and more clear who is doing it. And it's these countries that we are currently in conflict with. That would include Russia, North Korea, Iran, China, you name it. And uh, to make matters worse, as for the current State of the Union, our southern border has been wide open for several years. Now, put yourself in the position of these countries for just a moment and think, you know, you, if you were them and you're looking into the future, you would see that your future prospects are pretty grim. The entire Western world has come together in opposition to you, and their goal is to strangle you to death. They're going to cut off your resources, cut off the money, and even go to war to make sure that you don't continue on into the future. And you would be looking at that and thinking like, well, you know, as one of these crazy regimes, you definitely want to survive. You don't want to have a violent end like what happened to Gaddafi or Saddam Hussein or any of those people. So you, you would look at that and you'd say, we're dead if we do nothing. If we just sit here and let things play out, we will be choked to death. We will just suffocate and die and we will not have a future. And you look at the other possibility, if we go to war with NATO, with the West, they will all come together and they are too powerful for us, they will crush us. And then you start to think, but what if, what if we could do something to, uh, to break them up? Right now, everyone is kind of aligned behind the strength and the leadership of the United States. But if we could remove the United States, then the, the alliance, all of that would fall apart and we would be free to achieve our objectives or whatever. I am afraid with all this talk, sorry, I scratch my, my, my lip here. I'm afraid with all of this, this open border for all these years, who knows what's come across there. There's a lot of talk on the internet right now about, um, I don't know, a 9-11 taking place, that sort of thing, something far worse than 9-11. I think it's going to be, if something does happen, something more akin to Pearl Harbor. And now... All of these are on 
I forgot to turn them on. And we're overexposed. Oh, man, let me adjust this. Just a minute, guys, just a minute. Now, you know, we've been making these videos about uh, the camera stuff. I, I can't uh, sit here and be overexposed. There we go. Perfect. Everything is good now. Except that's going to really mess up the... Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well, this isn't a camera thing anyway. So, as I was saying, something akin to Pearl Harbor. Now, if you know anything about history, the goal of Pearl Harbor, when Japan attacked, they knew that they would not take the United States by, out by taking out what we had in Pearl Harbor. They knew that we would recover. They knew we would rebuild the ships. But their hope was that they could take us out long enough that they would achieve their objectives in Asia and be so entrenched that the United States would have no interest in coming and, I guess, pushing them back out. Uh, that did not work. They, they didn't achieve their objectives. We, we still had our aircraft carriers and the rest is history. But I could see them, you know, these countries that are opposed to us, doing exactly that. They have the motivation. They had the opportunity to move who knows what into this country across that southern border. While it's been wide open, we could talk about the corruption in the current administration, the corruption that has existed even when Donald Trump was in the presidency, all the crazy stuff that's been going on. Um, the border was a bit more secure. But, uh, yeah, who knows what's been moved across that border? An entire army could have been moved across that border, and we wouldn't know about it until they started doing stuff. They had the spy balloon that flew over us. There's collecting information all the way across the country that for some reason our wonderful government our commander-in-chief decided not to shoot down until it had already achieved its mission and flown all the way across the united states all the way over all of our sensitive military installations and then they shot it down well, I'm telling you, the State of the Union is pretty, uh, we're, we're sitting on the edge of a cliff. I feel like the American people are wandering around like a bunch of idiots with blindfolds on, walking toward the edge of a cliff. And if we could just reach out, and if they could just hear us long enough to take the blindfold off, maybe, maybe they could be made aware of what we're headed toward, and we could do something about it. But right now, with the current leadership that we have, I, I don't see that happening. And I'm afraid that uh, these uh, these powers out there that are opposed to us, that we're in current currently in conflict with, I'm sure that they're aware of that as well. And they'll probably make their move before the next president can get into office, <clears throat> before anything can be done about it. I'm, I'm afraid that uh, you and I and everyone in this country have been betrayed by these people. Uh, either to line their pockets or because they're ideologically aligned with these countries. Think of China, a communist country. They definitely have an interest in the uh, the global spread of socialism and communism. And I'm, I'm sure that they would align themselves with those kinds of people here in the United States to bring that about. And um, who, who knows? All I know is we're headed toward disaster here. There's the money situation. Our money has been printed and printed and printed to the most ridiculous level, the national debt is higher than it's ever. I mean, it's unimaginably large. $30 trillion or more. That's unimaginable. That's crazy. That, that I mean, I, I don't think that anybody could even put a, a, you know, where would you even fit that much money? I understand it's all just uh, fake money. Maybe that's part of the problem. Having this uh, this digital money is a serious problem. It shouldn't be allowed. You should say, look, you, you can only have what you can print. I don't know. I don't know what we, I'm. I'm a big uh, proponent of cash and that sort of thing, because I uh, I feel like we should have our freedom. You can't really track the cash. I know they try to track it now. Uh, that I am absolutely against. Just another thing that uh, we have some serious problems. The state of the union is not good. The state of the union is quite precarious. Um, I'm afraid that there's some chaos coming our way. I know uh, back when they were having the election, they were talking about if the Democrats failed to to win the presidency this last time around. They were even having these little war games where they would have, you know, California secede from the union and that sort of thing. There's a lot of talk about Texas seceding from the union and all this stuff and the right wing. What if it's not the right wing that does it? What if it's the left? And what if they do that and one of these powers like China suddenly comes into – uh, you know, I don't know, ensure their uh, their rights to have their own, their will or whatever. Kind of like what happened in uh, parts of Ukraine when Russia took over. Oh, you know, they had this referendum and they decided to be part of us. So we're just making sure that their rights are, you know, secure. What if that's what happened? We get to the election 
it uh, gets to that point. Donald Trump is going to win. And suddenly California secedes and this this army comes out of nowhere from within the country to ensure that the uh, the rights of the people in California who decided to secede from the union are guaranteed. And suddenly our entire West Coast almost is is gone and is now an outpost of the Chinese. What would what would we do in that situation? Again, I, I you know, you can call me crazy if you want. I'm just saying this is all what if. I'm not saying it's for sure going to happen, but um, certainly the the motive is there, the opportunity is there. Why not? Our our president if you think that this couldn't happen, then you are an idiot. You're a fool to think that they wouldn't take advantage of this in some way. They absolutely are. In fact, I think we've been set up by the people in charge. I don't know if they knew what was going on for sure, but they certainly have been willing to turn a blind eye, probably to make a buck, because that's what Joe Biden does. Anyway, yeah, my my uh, take on the State of the Union. I'll, uh, I'll leave it with that. Hopefully, guys... Uh, Stick with us. Uh, let me know. Do you think that this, am, am I crazy? Am I wrong? You tell me, because I'd really like to hear what you have to say. I'll see you guys in the next one.